Hello, hello, hello. How are you? Hi, good. How are you? You can hear me and everything? Is Everything's good? Yeah. So, talk to me, sir. What can I do for you today? So I could just jump around then with roles in your career so far. Sure. Well, then, let's talk it up. Okay. So, in terms of acting for you, did everything start with uh, Charlie's aunt in 10th grade? <laughs> yes, actually, it did. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was, uh, that was the first uh play i ever auditioned for and i got the lead and uh and i had to do an english accent and i'm sure it was terrible and uh i've gotten better uh but uh yeah i i was actually doing it because i wanted to be a uh i was thinking about being a lawyer mm -hmm. uh because i like money and i wanted to uh, get some and uh so i was like well i could try that check it out and uh my dad said well you probably have should have some drama so check it out so I went, did the drama thing, and I was immediately, I was in. As soon as the uh, curtain went down and the, I was just like, oh, she is. This is what I'm doing. I mm -hmm. love this. And, uh, yeah, so I found that early on, and uh, I've been doing it ever since. And, uh, yeah, so that was that was the catalyst right there. You've done some good research, my man. What was your first on-camera experience of uh, Unnatural Pursuits? Uh, that was my first um, film. Okay. I believe. Um, no, I had done some uh, commercials and, and things. Actually, I did a music video. We did a uh, we did a lip syncing to "Hip to Be Square." Huey oh, Lewis yeah. and the News. Yeah, <laughs> and it was an anti drug campaign kind of thing. So, you know, that real cheese ball crap. And uh, that was, I think, was my first way back when. Yeah. I know with, with anime, it started with Super Atric on, um, but was uh, Sweet It End Demon Century like your first bigger part? I think, uh, I think we call it Sweet uh, was, I believe, my first big role. It was Takateru. Yeah. And uh, yeah, that was the first big one. And then uh, Evangelion came shortly after that, I believe. I think I did a few others in between, but smaller stuff. Battle, Battle Angel was Battle Angel before yeah. that. Yeah, Battle Angel still has like a really big fan affinity today too. Yeah, yeah, and I I, I saw the uh, the the movie and I was like, that's really good. I really enjoyed it. Um, it was funny though because when um, when they were making that, we were in talks. We were trying to get some of the uh, the voice original voice actors to be in the movie. Oh. Uh, just a little, you know, little little quick little you know one line or something like that. And uh, I was told, yeah, the, get in touch with the, the casting director. It was funny because I knew the casting director from years and years ago. because so I was from Houston and uh, did stuff in Austin. And, and so I reached out to them and apparently they, they didn't really know about it. I was like, yeah, fine, that'd be cool. Uh, you'll have to fly out here, put yourself up uh, and you, you can be an extra. I'm like, I don't wanna be a freaking extra. <laughs> I'm like doing that for an extra role. I don't care that much. Uh, so yeah, that never actually happened. But I think it would have been a great thing for them to do mm -hmm. as, a, as a nod. But, meh, people don't listen to me. <laughs> and considering your experience up until that point, did you take to um, dubbing easier? You know, here's the thing about being an actor. Um, whenever they ask you, can you do something? You go, yes, I can. Mm -hmm. And then you figure it out. So <laughs> that's, that's kind of what I did with a lot of things, audio prompting, uh, dubbing. Like, can you, uh, I did a film called Imposters with uh, Amanda Wynn Lee. That's where I met her. It's funny because we all kind of ran in the same circles, uh, different. She was in an improv group and I was in uh, comedy sports here. And we just all kind of uh, didn't know each other, but would, would run into each other uh, eventually anyway. So we did this film together and uh, nobody's ever seen it. I don't think it ever came out anywhere. But we were just hanging out and just goofing around. She's like, you've got all these great voices. Why don't you come on and uh, do some uh, anime? I'm like, what's that? You know, it's like Japanese anime. I'm thinking, oh, yeah, that's uh, like cartoons. She's like, mm, not really. <laughs> I'm like, because I'm thinking Speed Racer because I, I grew up on Speed Racer as well. And I said, does it pay? And she said, yes. I said, I'm there. You know, and uh, so I went in and auditioned and read my lines they matched the mouth flaps pretty well and they said okay great here you go you got a roll super mm -hmm. atrogon and uh then it was off to the races baby i would take it maybe that you still do you, you still are relate the most to us uh, shinji with characters you played or pretty much i mean since i just did the 
the rebuilds uh, for Amazon Prime. And finally, finally, the end. Um, I just did that last year when I was in Australia. And uh, yeah, so, no, it was it last year or it was actually the year before 2020 mm -hmm. and 2021, kind of like October through, I think we went boom, 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 boom. So yeah, it was 2020. Yeah, so I was in Australia. And uh, so we got that out and uh, yeah, but it's always been, everybody's always, you know, it's Shinji, Shinji all the time. <laughs> it's, I've done, I've done like hundreds of roles, but it's Shinji, yeah. <clears throat> you know? Okay. <laughs> Do you remember uh, back when the, when you guys first did the end of Ava movie, um, what your reaction was like when you first had to do that scream and everything that was going on in the movie and just how, intense it was compared to everything else in the series um well i mean the screaming i i did all through i mean there yeah. was always a lot of screaming so i'm just kind of used to that it's like oh good i'm gonna get the scream <laughs> you know we call it therapy mm -hmm. um and uh yeah so I, I knew there was gonna be a lot of screaming but are you talking about the scene yeah yeah <laughs> that was funny there are so many outtakes and sick jokes because Amanda and I are, are sick, dark, funny, goofy. You know, that's why we say things online and get uh, people pissed off all the time. Um, <laughs> we don't mean to. We're just, you know, we're Gen X snarky, dark humor and nobody has humor anymore. Mm -hmm. Sorry about that. It's very sad. But uh, yeah, we were, <laughs> that scene was happening. I was like, what, 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 what's he doing? What, what's, because uh... all I could see was his back. And I could hear these noises. I'm like, what's, what's he doing? What's he, oh my God. <laughs> and I told her, I said, we're, we're, uh, that, did, did he just, we're going to, we're, we're doing, oh, we're doing this. Yeah. She's like, yeah, baby. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, this is where my life has led me to this point. Mm -hmm. All right, roll them. Let's go. So I'm a professional. <laughs> yeah. I actually did a uh, reaction video to that on my YouTube channel. So yeah, yeah go check that out. It's fun. <laughs> Well, what do you think is the case where you've had to get the um, darkest emotional headspace for a character for voiceover? Definitely Shinji, somewhere in there. I mean, it, it's always, because it was, um, I had some issues with my dad, nothing like him, obviously, but, you know, as an actor, you tap into what you know. Yeah. And so I had some issues with my father. And uh, so I would, you know, bring those to, to light. I lost my mother as well, so I could tap into that. I mean, there was, there's a lot of stuff that you tap into uh, if you need to as an actor. That's what we're trying to do. It's, it's emotionally difficult, obviously, mm -hmm. but there's a difference between doing that and not doing that when you're acting. Um, so that's like I can be, you know, if, if, if Shinji's in there and he's screaming and crying and stuff, sometimes I'm screaming and crying. I mean, I'm just, I'm, I'm doing it mm -hmm. uh, as much as I can. Uh, <laughs> I kind of scared my engineer on the, <laughs> the rebuilds it's like you okay in there I'm like yeah because <laughs> he looked at me and I, was, I mean i just did this gut-wrenching scene and he's like are you okay in there I'm, i just i looked at him i'm like yeah i'm fine <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like <laughs> actors they're crazy do you uh think there's any similarities um with uh shinji and rollo lamp rouge oh uh, that's a. Uh... <sighs> If I remember correctly, I mean, that, that's this is going way back because, uh, I mean, Shinji is quite new for me again since I just redid everything a year ago. Rolo was a long time ago, like 12, 13, 14 years ago, something like that. Um, but I remember Rolo was, was actually quite dark, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. So Shinji just wanted to help everybody. Rolo wanted to help himself, his cause, et cetera, I believe if I'm correct. So he wasn't as effective as Shinji, mm -hmm. so. That's what I think. And I know uh, back to the timeline was um, working on Miss Congeniality, how you got into SAG. Oh, no, I had been SAG. Uh, no, no, actually, I did not get into SAG then. Um, let's see, what did I do? I think they tapped hard lead me before. I was eligible, but I didn't really join until I got to L.A. in 2005, <laughs> I think, if I remember correctly. I don't remember. But, uh, you know, I, I had been eligible before then because that uh, when I worked with Alan Bates, that was also a union thing okay. there. So it's called Taft-Hartley. Right. Uh, so you're eligible to join and whether you want to join or not. Uh, Texas is a right-to-work state, so you, it's kind of more free-flowing and open. Um, and I'm living in California, L.A., and it's still quite free-flowing and open anyway. But that's, that's other crap that I don't really get into. Mm 
<laughs> was uh, the Chelsea Handler show one of the first on-camera things you did in LA? It was the first on-camera thing I did. Oh, okay. I believe, wait. Yes. Yeah, because I had just gotten there. If you see that and you look at him like going, hey, he's thin and cut and everything. It's like going, yeah, I <laughs> I lost 30 pounds uh, like a couple months before because uh, of the divorce, bankruptcy and all that stuff. Uh, I call it the Disparatrim diet. I don't recommend it, but it's very effective. <laughs> We're going back to uh, voiceover. I know this was um, obviously before you went to LA, but uh, uh, a keto. <laughs> In uh, Nade Nadesco, mm -hmm. that was a uh, was that that was probably around the same time as Ava. It was. See, the, a lot of people don't understand now. Um, things are, are different now, uh, technology wise. Uh, like for example, they did Netflix did Evangelion. They did it in a few months. It was meh, boo, 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 boo. well originally when we did it uh, the first time, it took two years because we had to do all of the stuff, record it and then send VHS tapes and actual scripts with all the markups over to Japan and back. And this is old school stuff, right? So it took two years. Well, during that time, I believe Nadesco came in and we were like, oh yeah, Spike, you got to do this guy too, because it was kind of the anti Shinji. As yeah. a matter of fact, there's a, um, there's a line that I put in there and they kept it uh, when uh, Akito has his, what is it? I don't know what they're called, but, but his big mech. And he, he's got to go out and fight. And he sees it. He goes, whoa. And he takes off. And I said, dig me. I'm running away. And off he goes. And that was exactly across from, I mustn't run away. I mustn't run away. Yeah. I mustn't run away. So that was kind of that inside uh, fun thing. And there was a scene when uh, Akito's in his mech and he's going up just like in Evangelion. He goes, Bruh! you know it's just shooting up like this and you hear him scream the whole time uh and i said you know let, let me scream the whole time and then he come when he comes back down it's like ah, ah, <laughs> and it's like that's funny so mm -hmm. let's keep that uh so i thought that was that was a lot of fun i liked akito mm -hmm. well and then in the in the movie for that too he has a whole like darker persona i'm not sure yeah, if i didn't like that okay to be honest I wasn't, I wasn't really cheesed about that. So. And this is one I don't know if you've ever really talked about, but um, Shien and Sayuki, that doesn't really look like a character that you would play normally. Shien, oh, okay. Shien was the one, um, the assassin always kept his eyes closed. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. That was cool. I, you know, people don't realize I've done so many different roles that, right. and they're incredibly varied. But the ones that I get known for are the effeminate little girly boys who save the world in a biomechanical robot. And that happens, uh, which is totally fine. And it's, it's funny because uh, that's just – that's such a mainstream genre mm -hmm. part, you know, these, these kids. And uh, it's probably not even PC for me to say that any longer. Uh, things change mm -hmm. on the week here. But it's like going, yeah, they're whiny little – guys who save the world by mechanical robots sometimes i can say that because i am shinji <laughs> and good night but uh it was all that was always kind of the running joke we used to say that all the time and it is so, somewhat of a mainstream thing so playing you know young uh boys at 53 now <laughs> is kind of freaky <laughs> so i've been saying you know what i don't want to play younger anymore i'm gonna i'm gonna go with you know, where I am now a little bit more because, you know, I've gotten deeper and gruffer so I can play some of the other characters. I'm like, give me the bad guys. Mm. Give me the bad guys. You know, I because I love playing bad guys. Well, psychos, yeah, I always play those. The young kids are the psychos. And it's they're, they're both rewarding in their own way. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I know you said before that doing uh, Ar Arakune and Blaze Blue was totally insane recording. That was nuts. That was fun. Um and it's here, here's the weird part. So it's it was Arachne uh, a couple of times when I did it. And then when I came back again, they said it's Arakune. Mm -hmm. I'm like, you're paying me. I'll say whatever you want. But I'm like, it was Arachne. And now it's Arakune. You got it. But when I uh, auditioned for it, that weird way he speaks, and he does not with it. It's, I can't even do. Um, it was, they had it in the script. 
and they had these red words. Like there'd be two words would be out in red, three over here, and it said, when you read it, just don't read the red words, or you should read it, and we'll drop it um, as you go. I said, well, why don't I just do it? And they said, you can do that? I'm like, let's find out. <laughs> and I did it, and they, I dropped it, and they go, dude, you got it. I was like, all right. And the sad part is, is like, oh, wait a second. I think I just screwed myself out of some time in the booth. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that is one of the, that is one, probably the freakiest, creepiest character I played, I think. Do you think you have a personal preference on doing um, dramatic opposed to comedic? Oh, I love comedic. I love to laugh. But you can find the comedy in, in drama. Mm -hmm. That's that's an act, that's acting 101, is always find the comedy in the drama. Because it is. Life is comedy. Mm -hmm. you know, and, and it's the comedy of errors. It's a comedy of, of pain. It can be comedy whatever, but there's comedy in the drama. If you look at sitcoms where something terrible happens, you know, somebody passes away and this and that, it's funny as hell. You know, in some ways, but you think about it in the real world, you're like, oh, that's terrible. You know, that's sad. Everybody's got to be sad here for this thing. But we have to laugh. And I think that's that's very important. We do have to laugh. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things in acting. You have to find that uh, and be okay with that. It's an art. Well, I know a primary example of that with anime, of course, is uh, in Bleach with your role. And... Yep, with... Um, Hanataro, I'm a healer. Oh, I love that guy. Yeah. He was fun. I, I really enjoyed that one. It's wild. I've been doing this for like 30 years. Freaky. Well, not 30. Well, 20, well, hold on a second. So I started in 94, 92, 94, something like that. So it's almost it's 28 years or so right now. Wow. Okay, cool. <laughs> well, for me, um, one of the first things that instilled your voice in my head was magic and orphan. Oh yeah. Yeah. And that was interesting. Cause I know they redid it recently and they kept David and Tranga and they called me, uh, they, well, they reached out to me on email. I thought it was, I really respect that. They let me know. They said, Hey, we know you did a great job, but we're going to go kind of a different way with that. So we just want to let you know that we're not going to be going with you on this. I was like, Hey, absolutely cool. You're the producers. You do what you want to do. I'm here if you need me. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought I respected that. Yeah. You know? Don't get that from all other people. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to name names. When was the last time you thought about pre-tier? Oh, God, I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> that was so long ago, and it was go. Yep. Uh, what was the line? It was, uh, you brats, or I don't even remember the lines, but that was a long time ago. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. You're taking me back, taking me back. <laughs> And one of my favorite manga, I know that it was one of the first anime roles that you got in LA was uh, in Mare, Genta. Yeah, now I loved that one. I thought they were going to get a second season. Mm -hmm. And I was working with PCB. Uh, that was when I first, I think I first met them over at PCB and I got that role. And I love them over there. I, it's so great. Um, I think they're doing something with Wesley Snipes now. I mean, they do great work over there. And uh, their situation there is so cool. And it's just such a great, uh, Keith and Val are just absolutely amazing. And I love the, the, the family and the, the studio. So yeah, that was a great introduction. And, uh, and it was goofy. It was fun and goofy. That's what I love. I love, you know, comedy is my thing. Um, and, and I love, I want to laugh. That's what I want to do. So what do you want to do with your world? I, I want to laugh. I mean, my mission statement is to bring laughter and inspiration to millions. That's that's my my mission statement. So the laughter you got to have it. And if you, it, I say, if you're not laughing, you're not living. Mm -hmm. And uh, that's something that I I I teach, I preach, I coach, and I uh, try to live it. Mm -hmm. Well, with the uh, on camera projects you've done, I know a lot of them have been uh, comedy. Is there a favorite one that you have worked on? Um. It wasn't really funny per se, but it was uh, now you see it, the Disney film, right. because I got to work with Frank Langella and um, <laughs> I met him in his underwear. Uh, we were running lines in his uh, trailer and um, 
I got to be in New Orleans for five weeks. Uh, and that was great because we ended at five and we go to the hotel and they had like a little wine thing. And then I'd go hit the hit the town and go eat some cool place because uh, New Orleans was my second city living in Houston. I was in New Orleans a lot and I love the food. And so I love New Orleans. So that was a lot of fun. I really had a good time working with Tommy Lee Jones. Um, and I say, because he cast me and directed me in the three burials of Melchiatus Estrada. And I tell people one of the great, one of the weirdest sounds you're going to hear is Tommy Lee Jones actually laughing because <laughs> he's a nice, funny guy. He really is. Yeah. I mean, he was smiling and, and I was just like, he's like, ha, 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 that's great. All right, let's go. And, uh, so I auditioned for one role that was kind of funny. I made him laugh and he put me in another role. So I played this um, soap opera star and I got a great shot somewhere. It's, it's not digital. I need to digitize it. Maybe it is somewhere, uh, but it's a shot of um, somebody was behind him looking at the screen while he's directing and I'm full screen. So it's it a great shot. I love it. So we were doing this scene uh, and we were, uh, there always be a river valley or something, you know, is the soap opera thing. And it was just, you know, campy, goofy stuff because it's on the screens. It's, it's the TV show that the main characters, uh, Barry Pepper and I forgot what's her name from Mad Men. Um, and they, they, it's something that goes through the, the movie. You'll see it a couple of times. And uh, so we're doing the scene. We did it like two or three times. We, got into Austin at like 10 30. We were done by noon. I mean, oh. and so it was real fast and uh, he comes out. Now it's interesting because when I saw him at the casting director, he had, you know, shorter hair, looking bright and everything. And then we went away for like a month or two, came back, his hair was down to here, scraggly. I'm like, he had had a drink or two. So he was in character. He was, he was there. And uh, it was amazing. I was just like, wow, what a transformation. And so he comes out and I don't know if you know this, Tommy Lee Jones started out in soap operas yeah. uh, a long, long time ago. So um, he, he comes out and he goes, well, you're as good as any soap opera stars I've ever worked with. What do you think? And I just looked at him. I said, sir, I would love to do it just one more time. He says, all right, go nuts. <laughs> and I go here, action. Yeah. And we just, we were like, there will always be a river valley. He goes, cut, that's it. <laughs> Let's go home. <laughs> it was awesome. Mm -hmm. So that was a lot of fun. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. I mean, Miss Congeniality was fun, but it was, it was one of those things where I got cut completely out of it. Um, but I spent two days working with Sandra, you know, like six feet away. Never met her. <laughs> it's one of those things. Six feet away, never met her. I'm like, uh, there she goes. I'd love to say hi, Miss. I think you're great. You're fantastic. Okay, bye. <laughs> She's gone. Uh, but uh, yeah, but I, I was able to see it. We were watching it. Um, we watched that scene because uh, it was on TV when I went and I stopped it. I was like, there I am. <laughs> and you can see me kind of glowering at her over the pool table. And I took when it's the, my camera and took a shot, posted it on social media. I said, there, that's me right there. I really did this scene. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Let everybody know. I swear to God, it was there. Has there been a case where you've gotten um, starstruck then, or do you not really get? Oh, I, I with her a little bit. I don't really get starstruck. Um, I've met a lot of uh, amazing people. They're just people. They're human beings. I mean, I've been in green rooms with you know uh, amazing people, and I I went up to Stan Lee. Uh, I saw him sitting there. I said, "Excuse me, I don't mean to bother you, sir, but I just would love to shake your hand." He goes, "Oh, okay. How you doing, son? You know." And I'm like, thank you. Have a great day. Bye. That's it. It's funny. One thing that I would have been, I wish I had done this. So I'm sitting in London at a convention in the green room and there's three Doctor Who's right next to me over there. I don't want to bother them, but there's Tom Baker, uh, the guy with the, um, the question mark uh, umbrella, mm -hmm. uh, who was also in The Hobbit, I believe, and uh, one of the other guys. And I'm like, I was, I hadn't watched Doctor Who since I was like seven or eight. It scared the bejesus out of me. So I, I didn't go over and say anything. But then shortly after that, I start, they revamped everything. And so I watched Eccleston and I'm like, oh, I'm hooked. I'm a Whovian right here. So I just never said hi to them. And I'm like, damn, I should have gotten a picture. That would have been amazing. 
Um, but I did meet uh, the seventh doctor, the one that played cricket, uh, Peter something, I believe. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I hung out with him a little bit. We had a table right next to each other. So we were chatting in uh, uh, another con later in uh, Doncaster, England. And we just, you know, kind of hit it off. And he was just a really nice guy. Mm-hmm. And so that was kind of fun. I was like, oh, man, I got to go back and watch all the old Doctor Who's, you know, up to Eccleston so I can kind of have a, an idea, uh, you know, watch the cheese ball. So I just haven't done that yet. I still haven't done that yet. I'll say hi to anybody. I don't care. And do you uh, still do you have a more affinity with voiceover now or do you still try to pursue on camera, too? I haven't pursued on camera in 15 years. Um, I got out to LA and I really pushed hard. I spent all my money going to these workshops and getting in front of agents and I got nothing. And I'm like, I had just finished like five movies in a row working. I've worked with four Academy Award nominees, two winners this close. Right. And Hollywood said, nobody cares, kid. Mm -hmm. Okay. (laughs) All right, then I'll keep doing voiceover. And uh, so that's what I did. And I was able to uh, survive for about 15 years uh, in just doing voiceover. Uh, and then I got, uh, got my, well, seven years. And then I got, I got married nine years. Uh, and then things kind of split off and then all kinds of crazy adventures and moving out of my apartments and over to Australia for a while, Burbank, then Australia, now Burbank again. So it's, uh, it's been a wild ride. Mm-hmm. And two babies. <laughs> I know another pretty early uh, video game role when you got to LA was a uh, felt Blanchemont in Atelier Iris. I don't even remember that one. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I know I I know it's on my resume. I'm like, hey, yeah, yeah. What about the uh, Trauma Center games? Those are pretty. Dark. Yeah, that was what Victor um... Miguel. Miguel, yeah, I think that was PCB as well. Uh, yeah, and I did a lot with them for a while, and uh, yeah, I just love working over there. Um, it was just so much fun. I, I love doing the fun stuff, and it's all fun. Anime is goofy in, in so many different ways, um, you know. But I really, my my love is I love doing video games. Uh, I want to do mocap and and video games. And actually, well, my my big big love is original animation, mm-hmm. uh, like um, uh, Get Blake for Nickelodeon. Uh, And that's, for those that don't know, original animation is where you do all the voices um, and then they animate that to your voice afterwards. It's not dubbing. It's like Simpsons, Family Guy. Those are like the holy grail. You know, you get something like that that runs forever and you get paid immense amounts of money to just have fun and love your life. That's that's the goal right there. I know it's pretty rare in anime too, but um, was there a case where you got to perform with yourself? So many times. I know, I think there was one in um, Evangelion or in Odesco. I don't remember which, uh, but there was a something on the screen. Somebody was watching a movie or something and there was like a German uh, professor or something. That was me. Oh, okay. Yes, I was the German professor. There we go. What about uh, Claude Kenny in Star Ocean? Do you remember that at all? Yeah, Star Ocean, uh, Richard Epcar uh, directed me. I love Richard. Um, that was a lot of fun as well. One thing I remember about that, which is so great, the engineer was keeping a running tally of all the outtakes, and he was editing them together as we went when he had a couple of minutes. He goes over here. He'd play it. and was just like, it was hysterical. Yeah. We get a copy of that find it and then one of your really um over the top villains uh papillon and busa rankin that is one of my favorite characters okay. uh, i love papillon um and it was what was it black is the devil and scorching is all hell people are like oh that's creepy I'm like, it was creepy like mother burger oh fries yummy um it's got to be you know silly and creepy you know guy eats people with his hands uh, i was like that's awesome <laughs> again psychopath i do them well you think that uh snake and black butler was probably like the lowest range you've done for like a main character oh no i've done uh 
much lower range than that. But the thing about uh, I love about Black Butler, and I've, I've got to uh, I got to see if I can get all of those snakes together. I'll put together a little video. Um, all of the snakes are me. Uh, so oh. every every voice is is me of all those snakes, and I think we came up with thirteen different uh, voices. And uh, yeah, so if I can get you know snippets of all of that, I, I want to put that together. Or maybe somebody somebody out there who is smarter than me could put that together and let me know. <laughs> Catch me on the socials, dude. I loved playing Snake. I really enjoyed that because uh, it was funny because we were in there and they're like, "Okay, uh, we got a new Snake. Uh, what voice do we want to do?" I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> what have we done? So we're going through them. Like, okay, that was it. All right, we haven't done this voice yet. Let's try this one for this snake. Oh, God, here we go. It's great. And uh, it was just, you know, coming up with silliness. Again, fun. There was a lot of crazy stuff the, that you got to do in Pio, Pio Tetris. Yeah, and I did that again recently. Mm -hmm. I remember like a couple years ago. I remember that was fun. I mean, there's so many of them that are, they're just out there and, and crazy, you know, silly, fun stuff um, that I've done. One, what was it I did? Uh, what was it called? What was it called? I did this with SDI. Um, I was like several different characters. I was Santa. I was uh, a guy who's kind of like Elvis singing. Um, I was a chef. Uh, and I was like a cloud god. It was just crazy. And it was really, really silly. Mm -hmm. I forgot the name of it, but uh, it's just a lot of fun. And uh, I, I just really enjoy, you know, doing it. Mm -hmm. Well, I know one example of um, a character that's more timid, but has a lot of strong moments is uh, Tanizaki and Bungo Stray Dogs. Oh, yeah. Now, Bungo, I like, I like Bungo. That was uh, a lot of fun. I think we're done with that one. I don't know if there's going to be anything more. Uh, yeah. And that creepy thing with his sister. Mm -hmm. Like what's up? <laughs> what's going on? Uh, but that was that was fun. That was a lot of fun. Um, I mean, most of them are a lot of fun. So uh, I can't uh, can't say it's not fun. It's the thing about anime is it's still it's still kind of uh, the lower rung. It doesn't get a lot of respect in Hollywood. Yeah. Um, and like, oh, if you're an anime actor, that's what you are. I'm like, no, I'm an actor. I've done some anime. You know, yes, I'm known well in anime because I did one of the biggest animes in history. Yeah. Um, I've done also tons of other things, you know, but Hollywood goes, oh, so you're an anime guy. No, I, I, I do all kinds of different things, you know, and it's like, oh, I do video games. Oh, you're a video game guy. Okay, sure. But no, I, I do, <laughs> you know, so that's a, that's a bit difficult. And that's why it's a lot of people don't stay in uh, doing dubbing that right. often. I've been doing it for a long time because you know, they just, they come to me. I don't really pursue it. Uh, it's just I've known, and so every now and then somebody just call me up. Hey, you want to do this? Sure. It's it'd be an hour. Mm -hmm. You know, easy peasy. Well, I think uh, maybe hopefully things are changing because uh, with uh, Colleen O'Shaughnessy being in the new Sonic movie, and she still does a lot of anime, and she's finally getting like recognition about it. Oh yeah, so I sent her uh, messages and everything. She was actually uh, she came to my uh, uh, my engagement party, I think. Or something. Oh, she lives she lives right over there somewhere <laughs> she's not too far away we're all in burbank if i remember correctly and uh she's great she is absolutely awesome and so i'm, I'm thrilled for her uh she is funny as hell just so you know she's absolutely she, everything you see about her that is just awesome and and funny and lovely it's absolutely true she's amazing of course you guys have that long-running naruto connection too uh oh yeah that's right so wait a minute in naruto you mean Naruto or Bleach? Was it Bleach? Naruto and Boruto, because she's she's uh, you know, and then you're you know Jean. Oh, the Boruto, Boruto, yeah. Because in Naruto, I was I was only like a couple of things here and there, yeah. but in Boruto, yeah, you know Jean, uh, which I'm, I'm not anymore. But uh, yeah, people know that by now. I'm sure it's been a when I went to uh, Australia, I wasn't able to do anything for a little while because it was kind of crazy. Mm -hmm. So. It's like, oh no, eh. it is what it is. And then uh, another one I don't really see you talk about much, um, Taylor Sakaki and God Eater. Sakaki! Yeah. <laughs> it's kind of the running thing every time. It's like, oh, here comes Sakaki. Sakaki! 
there's always something running behind the scenes with whenever any any show you've got there's something silly back there uh sakaki was fun yeah that was a, a good one nice quirky fella and vampire night too there's still a pretty good fan following with that there is i still get um who was i in that uh, his name takuma yeah takuma ichijo that's right uh yeah i still get people who bring me vampire night stuff i mean i see stuff that's very old sometimes like uh was el chia or something i'm like holy crap you know what's going on man sign it up uh but yeah i enjoyed that one as well i mean so i've got some i guess some really i guess you can see you know big role uh stuff that's classic and i and i really love that i'm always you know excited to do whatever's next um but uh you know we'll see well i know what would what, what i most recently in anime be the doraemon movies uh no i don't think i can tell you um what i've been i don't know yeah we did that when did we do that i guess so yeah i know we did that i did that when i was in australia uh got some other things but I, I i you know it's funny because we sign ndas for everything so when anybody asks me about something i i don't know mm -hmm. <laughs> i have no idea um until it comes out and somebody says oh this is out. You're in it. I'm like, oh, am I? Cool. Yes, I am. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I don't even know. Like, for example, I did something with my buddy uh, Todd Habercorn, um, and I have no idea what it was because they didn't tell us the title, and he didn't know. Mm -hmm. But we're so we, we do it. We do the whole scene. Like, okay, cool. See you later. <laughs> I'm like, well, what is it? What did we do? I don't know. So I write the characters down, and then when it comes out, I can find out usually. But uh, for the most part, I just don't say nothing. Well, I know relative, it was, well, a few years ago now, but uh, you got to be part of Sailor Moon in some way, which was cool. Yeah, that was fun. I love it that I got parts in different stuff. Like, I'm eight Pokemon. Yeah. Uh, I am, I you know, people are like, what? I'm like, I was Squirtle for like a minute and a half uh, <laughs> on one project. And then it was funny because I met, um, oh, my God. Um, I love the guy. <laughs> Eric. Yes. Uh, great guy. And I met him and I'm sitting there talking. He's, I said, I'm Pokemon. He goes, oh, you are? What did you do? And I told him, I'm Squirtle. He goes, he goes, F you, I'm Squirtle. Yeah. <laughs> like, I'm sure you are, man. I don't know anything about it. I was like, I don't know. And, uh, but I did, uh, it was Pokemon Kitchen something. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it was. But uh, yeah, I was like eight in that. And I did something else with Toshi and early on so it was squirtle and then uh, something else and dirk and something and then uh, i was a, like a rocket rocket grunt yeah uh guy and so it's it, that's like five different pro four or five different projects right there i'm like i don't i don't know we're doing a pokemon thing cool you know um so that was cool and the sailor moon oh yeah i was in the psychopath i remember that yeah i was a that was the second or third time i've been a possessed doll Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, like like you do um so i did one another possessed doll in jojo's bizarre adventure i remember that what was the one zozo -Zo zombie oh that was some fun one that was some crazy stuff in that i really enjoyed that um anyway <laughs> well uh, i guess i'm also talked about it already what is the case where you've had to um alter your voice the most significantly for anything I think what's weird, I did something in, was it Gachaman uh, or D. Gray, man, something. And I talk like this. Um, and that's, it's like, that's the, it, it's, I can only get so deep. I can't get, you know, super deep. I can get down here and be pretty, you know, in there, but I can't go with that baritone deep that, you know, people love. So I got, I've got a problem. I, that's, a, that's where I stop, but to go deeper, I do, I just take it way back in my throat and go all the way down. And if it's the right character, it works really well. I've done that a couple of times. Um, I did something in something that was music based for black. I don't know. Anyway. Uh, yeah. Something like that. Um, also, there's the real high voice end. I did a, a movie called Hatched. Uh, it's on my it's on my demo on my site spikesmission.com slash voice or voiceover, and uh, my demo plays automatically. And it's one of it's in there. It's uh, 
<laughs> Captain something. It's just like really up there and fun little alien guy. I got so many different layers. I mean, I coach voiceover and I tell people, you know, you can get hundreds of voices and it's just a little tweak, a little tweak, a little tweak, a little tweak, and you got different voices. Mm-hmm. Well, then I know there's uh, kind of what we talked about earlier. There's plenty of original animation instances where you get to play with, uh, like record with yourself, like with the, with the Barbie series and things like that. Yes. Oh yeah. Um, but, uh, Dreamtopia. Uh, yes, I actually have been going through to get pieces of that. I played a magician and a tree and a, uh, some guy who was a teacher and all kinds of fun stuff. That was a, a lot of fun because that is, you know, this is why I talk about original animation. This is one of the fun parts of doing original animation is everybody's in the room. Right. Uh, you know, and I love that because nowadays everybody's just sitting there with on their phone, just do, 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 and they're listening, to, you know, being quiet. And then when their part comes up, they, get up to the microphone very quietly and blah, 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 blah. Um, but it was fun because we're all there I mean America Young is over there there's Barbie right there you know and all these other characters and Tara and um, you know just sitting next to you know wonderful people but you can't say anything um, and Donna uh, Grillo uh, directed and Katie directed and they're just awesome it's just it's it was a, a really fun uh project to work on mm-hmm. so what other uh most recently what is what is uh, some other things that are that you can like safely talk about that you're part of um bum, 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 bum. well i've only been back in the states for two months three almost going on three wait February, march yeah two and a half months oh, so sorry. i'm still like i've only done a couple of gigs here so i can't talk about those I'm trying to think what I did in uh, Australia that uh, I could tell you guys about. Halala. I'd have to look it up and figure that out. Um, again, NDAs. I don't know. Sometimes those NDAs last for you know years. Uh, so I really can't tell you what um, what I've actually done. What about the? Uh, it was the most recent a near game near replicant. I think it was like two years ago. Oh, okay. But, yeah. But yeah, I mean, I, I loved reprising that. Uh, actually, I did that here in Burbank. So that was two, two and a half years ago. Yeah. That was really cool. That was really cool to revisit that. Uh, I enjoyed that. Um, yeah, that was, that was, uh, that was really cool to do. I really enjoyed that years ago. That kind of stuff I like to do. You know, it's, it's that video games that are just out there and fun. Yeah. But other than that, no, haven't been doing a whole lot because because of the shift. When you go to us, when you're living in Australia, uh, people are like, oh, he's gone. No, I've got Internet. <laughs> I put together a studio in my apartment in uh, the Gold Coast of Australia. And, you know, I'm, I'm ready. I'm good to go. Had my microphone shipped over and all that. I didn't realize we were going to stay. We were, it was COVID. Uh, we were there. I was appearing at a convention in March of 2020 and um, went from Melbourne and then went up to the Gold Coast. And when we were in the Gold, pulled in the Gold Coast, Tom Hanks uh, came out and said he had COVID. And that was, he was right down the street. He was filming there in Australia. And the whole world went, oh my God, Tom Hanks got it. Anybody can get it. America's sweetheart. Oh, Jeebus. So it was like, all right. So everybody started going, you know, nuts with everything. And um, so we were there and they were canceling flights to the U S they were locking Australia down. And we're like, what do we do? And we just kind of, you know, it was just part of the coaching we do. We manifested stuff. We just thought meditated said, you know what, we're going to stay. And we thought we'd stay, you know, a couple months, let it blow over. Two years later, uh, we come back home. Uh, and it was an amazing two years, probably one of the safest places on the planet where we were exactly. Um, so it was, it was awesome. And my son started, uh, pre kindy and, and kindergarten. And we had another baby six, seven, eight, nine, nine months ago, uh, birthed him in the tub in our apartment. And, uh, <laughs> so we go the natural route. Actually, we are my first son. You can watch this on Netflix. It's called being dad. I don't know if you saw that one. That was the, my first son. Uh, they followed us around. I was one of the dads. 
And uh, so he was born on camera, not the icky bits, but you get to see him like right after he was born, like, hey, here's my boy. And uh, so he did kind of the same thing, only even more uh, rustic. It was literally in the tub in our apartment and we had one friend there with us and the, the midwife was on her way. And my wife's like, baby's coming. <laughs> and so I'm like, oh, there's my baby's head. Here you go, honey. I helped, you know. So it was amazing. But uh, yeah, so it was, uh, it was a hell of an adventure. Mm -hmm. Well, it sort of ties in, I guess. So my final question is always asking, what do you want your legacy to be? Uh, my mission statement, I want to bring inspiration and laughter to millions. And that is, I want to raise my sons very well. Um, if we have any more sons or daughters, I want to raise them very well so that they can be inspiration and laughter for millions, hopefully, but at least inspiration. That's my goal. Um, I coach, I you know, I do a lot of things and, um, that's what I really want to leave. I want, and I said this in, in the being dad thing, I say, I want my children to be proud of me. Mm -hmm. You know, so they say, that's my dad. He did something. And, uh, so that's what I'm, I'm looking to do, uh, with my, my podcast, uh, the mind scrambler podcast, that's all about mindset and subconscious. And I have interviews with, uh, some some voice actors, some sci-fi. It's not about hey, let's talk about your your voice acting. It's about the mindset behind. So the people that I talk to, I know have a deep mindset, like uh, Wendy Lee, Jennifer Hale, Mark Pellegrino, you know, people like that. And they're really into the whole uh, mindset and coaching and, and personal improvement arena, and that's what it's about. Uh, and I'm getting ready to revamp it and start up again. And I've learned a lot in the last six months, nine months. I have not been doing it. Uh, so there's going to be a lot of mind scrambling. There's going to be some stuff that like people are going to, I don't know. I don't know what's going to happen, but we're going to see. Okay. <laughs> and I'm, I'm sure there's been a number of them, but if there's a single one that you, like a story that you have about how Shinji or some other larger role that you played saved someone's life in some way or help them through something oh absolutely shinji for sure mm -hmm. um i get it often uh, at conventions somebody will tell me like i was shinji i i felt and your performance helped me you know be heard and be felt and understand that i could i could fight because this is the part about shinji that people i i have a group i have a coaching group called the reluctant heroes journey and it's because you have these heroes like shinji He's a hero. He's a reluctant hero. He doesn't want to be a hero. It's not just the hero's journey. A lot of the hero's journey is like they, they want to be a hero. They want that stuff. Most people don't. They just want to live a nice life. Well, Shinji was that way. He just he didn't want to do any of this stuff, but he did because of love, because he loved his mother. He loved his father. He loved people, and he wanted to protect his friends. So he did things that were hard. And, you know, watching him go through this, a lot of people say, wow, I can relate to that. I don't really want to do this, but I, I can. And I, my, my coaching group um, that I'm going to be opening again uh, soon is about that. It's about, hey, there's a community here. We support each other. And I come in and I coach a little bit from time to time. I do like weekly challenges and stuff. Well, just enough to get you like, hey, you know what? I need that this week. I need to try something new. Uh, because this is, these are the kind of things that I learned when I was in a bad shape. Um, so that's kind of what I'm looking at with, with Shinji. And I do the Reluctant Heroes Journey talks uh, at, at some conventions now. I've got one on my YouTube channel. I highly recommend uh, everybody watch that. It's really good, very uplifting. Um, and it really outlines some of the coaching stuff. And if you're in that spot, if you are in a, a, a rough patch or a rough position, listen to my podcast, watch that. Uh, reluctant hero's journey on my youtube channel because it there's a lot of information that you're not getting mm -hmm. you're not getting from the mainstream media you're not getting from education from teachers from all that that is very very powerful that you need to hear um and i've had people come up and tell me wow you you just that even a reluctant hero's journey i had somebody come up uh, at the last time I, I did it and they said you spoke to me that was i needed that thank you um, and when I do my don't kill your date and other cooking tips panel, which was about dating and relationships, I had people go, dude, what you told us that just saved our marriage, you know, and I'm like, awesome. You know, and I know these things, they, I, I know the tools I'm trained in all of this stuff. Cause I, I love it. I think it's wonderful. Um, so that's the other aspect. I mean, I've got a lot of aspects to me, but, uh, I know how to help people. So when I'm talking to people, I know 
that what I'm saying is is real, mm-hmm. and uh, not everybody's ready to accept it. Not everybody's ready to hear certain things that they need to hear. Um, tough love is tough. <laughs> yeah, I do have my, I do have my own story about a kind of related to that. But when I was in um when I was in fourth grade, me and my family were just out to eat at a place that we like went to all the time, and then we were told that we can't leave. And then um, a few minutes later, heavily armed SWAT police officers come in and tell everyone to get into the uh, two bathrooms because there was a guy that shot two people and was trying to get into the restaurant because he crashed his car outside the restaurant. And we all just stay there until 1 a.m. and then get individually escorted to our cars. And then I know with how young I was at the time, I wouldn't have been able to uh, get over that without continually consuming the anime that I was watching at the time and that was a uh, like code chaos and bleach and stuff like that so thanks for being part of that absolutely well ptsd is very real and i'm trained in something called timeline therapy that uh i've helped people get over a lot of things like that mm-hmm. um it's surprisingly easy um when you're able to do certain techniques um if you watch people like like tony robbins uh right. he's been doing it for years um he's been helping people you know, you can watch his videos and people snap like, bam, like, dude, I didn't know my mind could do that. Um, it's amazing how powerful our minds are. And we're starting to awaken to that. And that's what I'm going to be going into uh, with some of my new podcast, uh, bringing it out into a bigger um, a bigger arena and letting people know that the power is inside of you. Mm-hmm. You know, I could do a whole hour on this easy because I, I do uh, a lot, but the power is inside of us and we have been dumbed down to that. And yes, we all have PTSD from from something. It could be anything, especially online now. People, you say something wrong on Twitter and you are attacked mercilessly. Probably some, you know, 13-year-old kid. Well, yeah, I'm going to tell you. You know, it's like, dude, you haven't lived. Mm -hmm. You know, why do you need to attack somebody? So um, we need to get to that uh, on a deeper level. And that's something that I do. That's something that I I teach and coach. So uh, hopefully younger people will be getting that message even from an older guy like me, because of the connection of anime. You know, that's why I started the Reluctant Heroes Journey group. That's why I've, I've been focusing and trying to share positive, uplifting things uh, with a little snark from time to time, because that's me. I, I am me. You know, and if you don't like it, I'm sorry. But, uh, you know, I am who I am, and you are who you are. I respect you, respect me. That's the whole thing. And we've lost that. You know, people think, oh, I'm getting attacked. No, you're not. Somebody just said something. You know, if you get feel like you're getting attacked, then and you're not, then that's something that you can work on and you can shift and reframe uh, to empower yourself. Mm-hmm. Yep. Well, thanks. I'm glad that I'm glad that I got to do this. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. So I hope this helps somebody. Uh, check me out on my sites, uh, spikespencer.com. Uh, check me on my Facebook page, my Twitter page, my Instagram page, uh, and of course my YouTube. Uh, channel and the uh, Mind Scrambler podcast you can get on Apple or wherever. Okay. All right. Thanks. You bet. Bye, Bye everybody.